Can you hear it back there? Yes. All right. Fantastic. Good morning. Good morning. No, 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 no. This is the Church of Christ. This is not the Lions Club. This is not the Rotary. This is not the JCs. This is not the Chamber of Commerce. This is Brethren. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Welcome. Good. I am glad to be with you. And if you haven't got a smile this morning, we're going to give you one, okay? Because Jesus is on his throne this morning. He's very alive and well, and he's interested in you and what we're doing this morning. And so, we're going to continue this morning trying to mm, be what Ken Fox is not, was it Jesus, okay? I haven't made it yet. I haven't arrived. I'm not 100%. In fact, I'm about 3.6%, okay? So, we're working on me this morning and hopefully on all of us. Doing what? Trying to grow in maturity. And we're going to ask Dave, can we shut these floodlights off again? Would that be okay? Just to make the screen a little clearer. So, how do we become like Jesus? That's what we've been doing now since Friday night. By the way, thank you all for dialing up the weather this weekend. <laughs> I've never seen a congregation been so good to a guest preacher that they actually got the weather warmer. Man, it's been fantastic. I don't know how you count Celsius, but I count Fahrenheit. We left home, it was about 65, which is somewhere warm for you all. And it's been that. Man, it's just fantastic. Thank you. All right, so this is morning. Think like Jesus, act like Jesus, and be like Jesus. And then see if our neighbors, the folks we work with, the kids at school, can they tell the difference between us and everybody else? So let's ask that question. As we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there we are, trying to grow into being like Jesus. So this morning, let's talk about growing spiritually. Not physically, but spiritually, okay? We've looked at these verses now for about five sessions, where Paul says to those Galatians that we're having the problem with law, you know, Jesus Christ needs to be formed in you, and the message says becomes visible in your lives. And so our speech, our behavior, our conduct... Should all be that like Jesus? That are you there yet? This is yes. This is no. And this is a uh huh. Okay. So we're on the same page. All right. So we've talked now about being salt. Remember what the functions of salt were? It's seasoning, disinfectant, and preservative. All right. So that's what all of us are here. That's what God wants us to be. So we talked about being light of the world, and there was two kinds of deeds that Jesus said we are going to do. We can either be agatos, which is the things that you find every day from your neighbors, or we could be kalos, which is those deeds that are winsome and beautiful and attractive, like the lady that anointed Jesus' head with the precious ointment. And then the third session, we talked about 18 ways to be like Jesus. So I taught this series at the uh, Mason Church of Christ, and we had 18 classes. And so you all really got the speed study this weekend, okay? Because we took 18 and combined it down into seven sessions. And so if your head is spinning, it's because I talk too fast. And I'm sorry about that, but I, I, it's just me, okay? So we talked about thinking like Jesus, talking like Jesus, and then, uh, this morning, let's grow spiritually like Jesus. Growing. How do things grow? What's it take? So in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 52... The record says that Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and who? Man. All right. And so that's what we're talking about, to be like Jesus. We're going to grow in favor with God, but also with one another, with our neighbors, with everybody we work with, everybody that knows you. Are you Jesus to them? Well, that's the goal of our weekend. All right. So Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, favor with God, favor with men. Was that physical or spiritual? Physical, that's what. And somebody said all of the above. Thank you, all right. <laughs> Y'all doing good, all right? Well, you're with me. All right, so why do we need to grow up spiritually? Good, I'm glad you asked that question. What is spiritual? All right, we all understand physical. We're all doing this. But then when we talk about spiritual, then well, we're dealing with our heart. We're dealing with our emotions. We're dealing with our brain. We're dealing with our thinking. And so we're all involved in all of that. That's what involves everybody here, from the smallest to the, to the oldest, okay? So if we talk about the word spiritual, it's used in the New Testament, but not in the Old Testament. Interesting. 
And so the Spirit refers to that part of us which is like God in contrast with that which is this, you know, mortal or, or natural or physical. So 1 Corinthians says, He who is spiritual appraises all the things, yet he himself is appraised by no man. Galatians 6.1, You who are spiritual restore such a one. So what's it mean to be spiritual? That's why you're here this morning. Let's see if we can get some more parts of that. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, let us make man in our image. So there's all the, there's some of the attributes of God, and there's a lot of uh, attributes of us that are just like God. So does God look like me? We'd leave this morning, wouldn't we? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, but the world's full of gods that have what? Physical characteristics. Jeannie and I worked in Thailand for 20-some years. Thailand, Burma, Laos, Cambodia, all have God's small g. And what do they look like? Well, some of them look like Chinese folks. Some of them look like Indian folks. Some of them look like folk folks. I mean, you know, they just got every kind of God you can think of. Some of them have two heads, three heads, 16 arms, 18, you know, I mean, it's just any kind of God you can think of. But our God is what? Physical or spiritual? Let us make man in our image. So how are you in the image of God? How many eyes does God have? How many noses? How many ears? Well, that's, we think it physically again. And God is what? God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and the truth. Oh, we've got that down. Okay. So if this is true, are there some things that, that exist that are true, but you can't grab them with your hand? Let's go down to uh, Walmart and see if we can get five pounds of manners. <laughs> yeah, some of your kids are having a problem with manners. You know, they don't quite do it. So, you know, run down to Walmart and say, ask the clerk, that, hey, could I have 1.2 ounces of manners? And what kind of reaction do you get? You're kind. You kind of, you know, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> okay. So there are a bunch of things that, you know, that you can't put a trust can you grab trust? Can you get character? Can you get your hands around it? Physically? No. It's what? It's all up here. It's all in our, our, our mind. It's all mental. And somebody expanded that list of 10 to 50. I can't, don't have time this morning to go through it. But there's just a bunch of things in this world that are valuable. That you want to have. You want in your family. You want in your individual personality. And you can't go down to Walmart and get them. So let me give us a little test this morning, okay? Which of the following are physical or spiritual? And which ones are you not sure of? So is that physical or spiritual? Proverbs 6 talks about a haughty look. Haughty look. So when someone looks at you like that, is that physical or spiritual? Both? Alright. Jesus said the things that are up here come out where? Out, out here. So if this guy's got a haughty look, where did it start at? Uh-huh. He must know Ken Fox. Okay. So is this physical or spiritual? The, bo the folks that came into our hotel last night. <laughs> it was kind of exciting. She was a blonde, had long hair, and she was riding piggyback on her boyfriend. And, you know, her clothes were kind of off, and I was sure she was Caucasian because there was enough skin showing, okay? And so he was walking in like this. He was feeling no pain, and she was looped. I mean, she was gone, okay? So was that physical or spiritual? All right, you're passing the test. Again, this is not offensive in Canada, but in Thailand, students don't dress that way. If they raise the hem of their, of their skirt, it's... Uh, Offensive to Thai culture. You know, Thais, when we first went there in 69, they don't touch. When you meet a Thai person, you why, like this, but you don't shake hands. Now you go into the Church of Christ in Bangkok at Soy Sea, and they hug you to death. What's happened in 40 years? <laughs> Jesus has taken over some of this physical and made it spiritual. Yeah. So, uh, y'all have any casinos here in, in, in Edmonton? Yeah. Oh, sh really? In my country, they're all on the Indian Reservation. <laughs> I don't know where they are here, okay. So again, is gambling physical or spiritual? 
you don't have too many Buddhist priests here, but when you find the Buddhist priest in Kongan in a Starbucks, it violates every tenet of the Buddhist religion as they talk about their priest. So would violating religious tenets, would that be physical or spiritual? Whoops. I took this shot yesterday at the hotel. No. <laughs> but is that physical or spiritual? Well, obviously the eyes are physical, but where, is the, uh, where does it start at? Dun! Yeah. yeah, okay. And of course, there, this dates me, but that movie, The Graduate, that's when things started in the movie industry, when they started to do all the nonsense and all the nastiness. You know, this was way back when. I think back in the, maybe the 50s or the 60s. And then what you do on Facebook, is that spiritual or physical? Roy said he used to be on Facebook. And then somebody called him up and said, Hey, Roy, how come you got all these naked girls on your Facebook page? And so Roy did what with his Facebook? He pitched it. He's not had been on it since. Is Facebook spiritual or physical? And the answer is, of course, is what? Jesus said in Matthew 12, For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. And so I've added to the text, I'm a heretic, okay? For your Facebook and your iPhone and your iPad and your messages and your Instagram and your sexting and your email, and what's the other thing I left out? Tweaking or twi Twitter. What is that? Twitter. 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 Okay, I can't do Twitter. <laughs> I can barely turn on my laptop. But you think about that, all those things that we do come where? They come out of my mouth out of my hands, but the source really, Jesus said, is what fills my heart. And so we're talking about growing spiritually. Again, Jesus said, not what enters the mouth defiles a man, but what proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles a man. So what's on your Facebook page, what's on your Twitter page, what's on your the email, what all that junk is? I mean, all that comes out of what? Comes out of our, our heart, what really makes us tick. Oh, again, Jesus, do not understand that everything, do you not understand that everything goes in the mouth, passes in the stomach, and it's eliminated? But the things that come out of the mouth come up from the heart, and those defile the man, and out of the heart comes evil thoughts, thoughts, thefts, false witness, slanders. These are the things which defile the man. So there's your heart, my heart, and we've got adultery, theft, deceit, envy, all those nasty things like that. They're all where? In our blood pump. Wrong. <laughs> They're right up here in the part that's just like God. Think about that. That which God said, let us make man in our image. We've got that mind. No, nothing else has it. Animals don't have it. No ever living things has what we have, that conscience. And that's, Jesus said, what's in that thing is what comes out of our mouth and out of our keyboard. So growth then, as we're talking about growth this morning, growing spiritually, Growth is a natural thing. Mark chapter 4. The kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the, the ground, okay, in the soil. He goes to bed at night, gets up in the day, and guess what? The seed is sprouted up. How? He doesn't know. He hasn't studied agronomy. He doesn't have a master's degree in agriculture. But all he knows is he sticks it in the ground, covers it up, a little water and fertilizer, and boom, what comes up? It comes up. The soil produces crops by itself. First the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. And when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle and becomes the harvest has come. So that's the cycle. Growth is what? Natural. And what's interesting in the text, the soil produces crops by itself. The Greek word is automat. Huh, that sounds like something in English, doesn't it? You uh, put the coin in the Coke machine, click, 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 and what happens? A Coke comes out automatically, which means what? It does it all by itself. So you plant this seed, and guess what? The seed grows, has roots, it gets a leaf, and then comes up of its own accord. You don't have to sit there and help it cuss and all that, because what? Nature takes its course. It's natural. So here's a little natural thing. 
you know, God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and fill the earth, and so Gene and I thought, you know, he meant us to do that by ourselves. And so back in 1969, we had these four little critters here, and now just a few years ago, it's expanded into 25, and now it's up to 27. We're trying to fill the earth by ourselves. And so far, we've been very successful. Why is that? Growth is natural. In 44 years, actually, we've married how many years, Gene? 50, 55, she can't count that high, okay, but I think it's 55 going on 56. So the two of us got married and 56, year, year, 56 years later, there's 27 of us. Wow. But if you all followed our example, guess what the population of Canada would be. <laughs> yeah. Explosion, population explosion. It's what? Growth is just natural. And so you plant the seed and guess what? It comes up. In our human head, you plant the seed in your grandkids, and you know what you get? You get a great-grandkid. Man, they're better than the originals. I like them, okay? Paisley is almost a year. Is she a year old? She's over a year now. She's the best grand, great-grandkid in the world, and there's seven billion of us, and she's the best of the bunch. So why would we want to grow spiritually? That's what your kids are asking you. Well, we could say the Bible says to, or my parents told me to, or the preacher taught it, or Roy said it, or maybe by a Bible teacher could it. Or, how about some reasons from nature, why we should be growing spiritually. And nature says you're either growing or dying. That is a principle of nature. It's either growing or dying. And that's true of all of us. We're either more active in church, we're studying our Bibles more, we're praying more, or we're doing what? Yeah, we just blew it off. And guess what? It ain't for me anymore, it's for mom and dad. It's okay for grandparents, but, you know, new generation. If we're not growing spiritually, we're dying. Secondly, whoops, let's go back one. Where would it go? Hello, there we are. So we're either growing physically, because that's not a choice. Or we could be growing spiritually. What's wrong with this guy? He's 45 years old, riding a tricycle in a spacesuit. What's wrong with him? He hasn't given. He's still got what? He's still got a three-year-old mentality. Yeah. So physically, what? He's grown. He's 45 years old. But mentally, spiritually, he's what? He's still back with the toddlers. Growing physically is not a choice. That's why you're the size you are. God made us naturally to, to grow up and, you know, get what we are. But spiritually, if you don't know more Bible now than you did last year, whose fault is it? Who stunted your growth? If you're not praying with your family more this year than you were last year, guess what? Whose fault is it? If we haven't got more chairs full this morning than we did a year ago here in the South Edmonton Church of Christ. I didn't say that, no. So could this be our congregation? Have you been in some congregations that are like that? Everybody's what? Nobody's growing up. They're all kids. Is that possible? Yeah, we got some congregations like that in Thailand. We're growing some congregations like that in Cambodia. We may even have a congregation or two like that in Canada. I know we do back in, in Arizona. Now some folks deliberately don't grow. If you like those bonsai trees, they're permanently pygmies. Why? Because that's the way they're designed. Paris, you remember Paris Hilton? She's been that way ever since I know her. Which is what? Party girl. You want to grow up and be an adult? Get off the drugs, get off the booze, get off the parties and make someone of yourself? No, why? I like it. So some folks don't grow spiritually because they choose what? Not to. Not to. Is that dumb? Ask God. Let's see if we're still here. And as we look at nature, there's nothing fake in nature. It, it's all, it all grows, okay? We've got these kind of things, and then we've got these. Which one of those is the real one? You look at it and say, huh, well, Ken, I'm not sure. They both look real. Because we can do awesome things now with plastics and synthetics, and so the, the fake looks like the real thing. But that doesn't happen in nature. So there's no fake stuff in, in nature. So nat nature tells us we're either growing or dying. We're either growing physically, and that's not a choice, but spiritually is. 
And then growth is natural, and some of us may not want to be growing, and then there's no fake growth in nature. So let's talk about growing spiritually. Wow. Early growth requires help. So you take the seed and you put it in the soil and where I was raised in Eloy, Arizona, and guess what? Nothing happens. It's 115 degrees in the shade in the summer. So if it doesn't get a little water, what happens? Nothing. So when you plant a seed in where I was raised in Eloy for five years, you know, it needs some help, it needs some water. Paul says that's true of us as, as Christians. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you are not able to receive it. Who were those folks? The brethren at Corinth? What was their problem? You know, they had all these problems. You read 1 Corinthians, 16 chapters, how many problems are? About 9,000. I mean, <laughs> you name it, they did it. Okay? And so Paul said, hey, I can't feed you with meat because you still need what? ABC. You still need the, 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 the basics. All right? So early growth for us spiritually can require help to get through these early stages. Secondly, growth spiritually comes from having good roots. All right? In 2 Timothy, Paul tells Timothy, Study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly handing the word of truth. And so that's what we're doing here this morning. This is called a Bible class. Okay? Why do we call it that? Because we all came to let God talk to us this morning from His word. And our goal this morning is to be like Jesus. Okay? Grow into maturity. To be more like the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 of that same book, I am mindful of the sincere faith within you which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mama whose name was... Bernice, George, Frank, Samuel, Deborah, Bathsheba, who was it? Eunice. Eunice, yeah, Eunice, see, you all been studying that book, that's good, okay. So where did Timothy get his faith? Grandma and mom. Where do you kids get their faith? One of the things we're doing at the Mason Church of Christ, we're reading the statistics. And the statistics say that we are losing 90% of our kids. Mom and dad got their faith from grandma, but guess what? Our kids are getting their faith from iPhones and from school and from cell phones and from TV and from movies. And guess what? Those things don't generate spiritual faith. And so kids grow up in this 2016 technology and they get to be college age and say, that's for mom and dad. That's not for me. Growth comes from what? Mom and dad. Grandma and grandpa. All of you nurturing the body of Christ. And so the Mesa Church of Christ is now actively seeking a family minister. We are actively seeking a youth minister. We're actively seeking a Spanish minister. And for those three positions, they've got me. <laughs> I'm the part-time temporary preacher. And my last day of work is Monday, tomorrow. I quit. And we're looking for three preachers. We got one, so that'll give us a staff of four for 450 folks. Why are we doing that? We want to keep 90% of our kids instead of losing 90% of our kids. And the way we plan to do that, Lord willing, is to invest in you, Mom and Dad, so the kids learn the scriptures not from Bible school, not from this class, but around the dining room table, around the morning prayer before we go off to school. The spiritual things that we promote all during the day, that's where our kids are going to learn about Jesus and about the book. Growth comes in stages, okay? If you read 1 John chapter 2, John talks about the little children and then the young men and then the fathers. Lena, lena, lena. We go in stages, okay? Romans 4 talks about Abraham was 100 years old with respect to the promise of God. He grew in faith even at that age, okay? So as we talk about spiritual growth, it comes in stage sprout. Getting higher, getting bigger, okay? 
And so that's how we grow spiritually. That's what we're doing this morning. Some of y'all have been Christians for, ooh, I can't think back. How, how long ago was 1961? 55 years. That's how long this old man has been a child of God. You may have been a Christian for a couple days, a couple months, a couple years. So should I be more mature spiritually than you are? I hope so. <laughs> and so we all have to do what? We all have to keep growing in stages and understand that comes in stages, okay? And fourth of all, our growth depends on us individually, okay? Remember 2 Peter, You therefore, beloved, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter's talking about all of us individually are responsible for our growth. How mature are we this morning? Well, ask yourself, look in the mirror. And so there we are all by ourselves out there in the desert and growing based on our own commitment to the Lord, our prayer life, our study of the scriptures. Number five, the challenge to all of us is to grow regardless of the circumstances, okay? First Peter talks about their distresses, various trials. Second Peter, your faith, add moral excellence, and he goes on to those Christian graces. So regardless of where we are, regardless of how hostile the environment is, we're supposed to grow. You all remember back in 1998, I was among those that were thrown in jail at the church in Laos. The whole church went to jail. So if they came in tonight like they did in Laos that day, all of you would be in prison. If you're a mama with a baby, they would let you go. You wouldn't have to go. If you're expecting a baby within a month like Bonesomad uh, was, you didn't get to go to the prison. If you happen to be visiting the Church of Christ tonight and never been to the Church of Christ before, you get to go to jail for two weeks. Welcome to the Church of Christ. That's really a good incentive. But guess what? We need to grow regardless of what? The circumstances. So of all the folks who went to jail, that was 1998. How many years ago was that? 18. Seven of those men that were church leaders got to spend a year and a half in prison. One of them lost his faith. The other six are all graduate preachers. Self-supporting in the nation of Laos. Self-supporting in the, nat in the nat nation of Laos. What did they do? Circumstances, been in prison for a year and a half, the government hates their religion, hates their Bible, won't let you import Bibles, song books, any kind of religious material you cannot bring into the nation of Laos, even now today. And they what? They finished Bible school and they're self-supporting preachers. What's that say about what? Grow regardless of circumstances. Even though it's harsh, even though it's tough, grow. And then grow where you are. Let's grow in Edmonton. Let's grow in Canada. You all need to go to <coughs> the United States to learn the Bible. You all need to go to the Sunset School of Preaching like I did to become a preacher. No, we've learned better than that, haven't we? We educate our preachers right here in Canada. We've got all kinds of methods. We've got a whole row of guys back there that what? Either are studying the Bible, going to study the Bible, or been studying the Bible. Grow where you are. Grow where you are right now. It doesn't depend on, yeah. It doesn't depend on them stinking people down south. Yeah. It depends on where we are right now. And we happen to live in where? Edmonton. You know, I lived in Michigan for five years. Weather was kind of like it is here. We had that 800-foot driveway up to our house. And in the wintertime, I just love living in Michigan where you got out this, the, the walk behind snow plow. I'm ling, 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 for about two hours trying to get out of the house. Y'all enjoy that here? Yeah, okay. Good. That's why we live here. We like, we like winter. You know, we like snow. Uh, we call it ice fishing. I think that's what it was. So let's do what? Let's grow where we are. And so growth is like this. When we're a new Christian, we start down here at zero. And then we just, as time goes, we do what? We improve, we grow, we know more, we, you know. <laughs> I'd been a Christian about four years. 
when the brethren asked me to preach, I said, no way, Jose. I was about 25, and so they kept working on me and kept working on me. And kept working. They said, Ken, we'll give you Sunday night. You know, there are not a whole lot of folks there. You know, just, you know, do your best. So I worked for weeks and got at least 45 minutes worth of material. Got up in the old Central Church of Christ. Sunday night. Man, I was ready. I had pounds of notes. And they lasted five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that was my introduction. That was my beginning. That's where I started. And you see this old man in front of you now. That's what? That's what growth is. That's where you start down here at zero, five-minute lesson. And then finally you get here where you can try to talk about being Jesus. Let's be careful. Because weeds do what? They prevent growth. In Matthew 13, Jesus talks about the enemy came into this weed field. And he sowed tares also among the wheat. What are tares? If you read the margin, the Greek says darn elves. And it's a weed, it's a weed that looks like wheat. So they're growing up together, and guess what? You can't hardly tell them apart. And so when you got the weeds among the rice or among the wheat, beware, because weeds do what? Prevent growth. So be cautious as we're talking about growth. So let's have a little test this morning. I enjoy us trying to see if we, you know, if we're, if we're getting what, what Jesus is talking about. So weeds or growth? And everybody said what? Weeds? Or everybody said growth? What's wrong with this picture? Edmonton, would you be offended by that in Edmonton? No. Why not? She's like where I live, okay? That's the way folks dress. Can we change that? No. Do my daughters dress like that? I don't have any daughters. <laughs> Do my granddaughters dress like that? What did you say, Jean? Oh, really? Really? Eunice, Lois, where are you? <laughs> so that's my granddaughter. She's now how old? I've got two or three of them. I forget. I lost count. Okay. But we're talking about weeds or growth. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 talks about don't what? The things you've heard, don't drift away from them. So you've got to know it to begin with and then what? Don't leave it. Don't drift away from it. So would that be weeds or growth? Roy says that's weeds. I think we all agree with him. Oh, we don't have these here in Canada, do we? Do we have these uh, internet cafes? Do we? Okay, in Bangkok, in Vinjan, in Cambodia. Not everybody can afford internet at home. Don't, not everybody has a computer. So the kids go down to internet cafes and they play what? Games. What kind of games? Oh, they teach you Bible, and they, they just do all these spirits. No. <laughs> we play Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. And we do war, shoot them up things, and we do cops and robbers, except the more blood, the better. The more blown off heads, the better. You know, really edifying great stuff for our kids, okay? Weeds or growth? Weeds. Uh, let's see if we can find another one. James talked about those that are double-minded. <laughs> Weeds or growth? Weeds. Whoops, hold on. Where'd he go? There he is. Hypocrites, okay? The word means one that carries a, a mask, an actor. All of us are capable of being that, okay? So if we're two-faced, if we are not what we really portray, that would be what? That would be, again, these weeds. And then the literature we read. Where's the uh, watchtower come from? Is that here in Canada? Oh, really? And what good religious group would that be from? The Jehovah Witnesses are here in Edmonton. Oh, back home we call them JWs. And that's not a, that's not an obnoxious word. That's just a you know an abbreviation for for Jehovah Witnesses. Okay, and they knock on my door about twice a year. All right, anybody? Uh, know where this one comes from are they here in Edmonton 
Oh. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so we can do what? We can read all kinds of religious literature that folks come into our door, knock, 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 and hand out this stuff. Weeds are growth. Well, we need to know how to handle that, don't we? We need to have the tools here to discern between the truth and error. And so, yeah, we need to grow out of this stuff. And, of course, there's a picture of me about uh, last week. What's wrong with this guy? Weeds or growth? I slipped into your living room and took this last month. What's wrong with this guy? He's a typical slothful American, okay? There's nobody like that in Canada, all right? But, you know, down south, they got these guys. Weeds or growth? Lots of weeds. And there is the goal, as we talk about nature, you know, the plant, the seed, growing up in stages, making these fantastically strong, tall trees. That's what Jesus would have us all be, be one of these maybe tall redwoods or a tall oak or a strong pine tree. Mark chapter 4, Jesus says, And others are the one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns. So this is the parable of the what? The parable of the soils. Your version in the Bible probably says the parable of the sowers. But it's really, we're talking about where the seed falls among the soil, the soil, okay? So this is the seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word, the worries of the world, and the deceitful of riches, and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. What's the problem? 2016 has overcome us. Our kids are full of the internet. Our kids are full of their society. Their schools is full of all this junk. Your company's all full of that junk. The folks you deal with at school are all full of that junk. And guess what? It infects us. The weeds get us. And Jesus says what? The seed becomes unfruitful. So the challenge for our class today is to grow like Jesus, okay? A lot of folks don't want to grow up. I don't know if you know Adam Sandler, but, you know, all the stupid movies they make. My brother is two years older than I am, so he should be smarter than me, right? If I'm 76 and he's 78, he ought to be a bunch smarter than me because he finished college before I did. He got his degree in mechanical engineering, so I did too. He went to the University of Arizona, so I did too. He got a job right out of college, so I did too. So I followed my older brother. He became a Presbyterian elder. So I became an elder in the Church of Christ. So he retires at the age of 55, and I'm still working. <laughs> now who's smarter and who's growing spiritually? So what do you do at the age of 55 when you got a great retirement from General Electric? Well, you play golf three days a week. And then you play toy trains. And you spend thousands of dollars on G scale trains and you have a train track going out your backyard and going out here and going under the trees and going up here and going down here and you have trains and more trains and more trains and more trains and soon you've got more trains than you can play with and you're how old? You're 78 and now you're too old to bend over and <laughs> work on the dumb things. So when you get to heaven and you present your life to the Lord, you, you present your golf score Card, present your train tracks and say you retired at what age? 55. What time we got to quit? Quarter till? I'm overtime. We're almost done. So what are the 2016 obstacles? What's that mean? Busyness as usual. We're also stinking busy. We don't have time to think spiritually. And then according to George Barnum, we have these obstacles to our growth. Lack of commitment, lack of repentance, church busyness, and limited fellowship. You all are undoing that. So this morning have we arrived yet? For all of us Jesus sitting here, when you leave this afternoon after the potluck, guess what? Everybody's going to be Jesus to Edmonton. You were already that before I got here. All we're trying to do is fine tune that, twerk it a little bit, do what? Grow spiritually. So let's go through the list, grow, we talked about growing spiritually like Jesus did. And then for the sermon this morning, let's change our concept of the church. Roy? Thank you for listening to the lesson. 
And we hope you were blessed and challenged by the word of God. The South Edmonton Church of Christ meets at the South Wood Community Center in Millwoods, Edmonton, Canada. Our location is 1880 37th Street Northwest. Our phone contacts are in Canada, you can call us at 780-902-1329. For those living outside of Canada, you can call us at 321-220-7519. Our meeting times on Sundays are as follows. 10 a.m. Bible class for all ages. 11 a.m. We meet for worship to break bread, to have the communion, to remember the death of Christ. We sing, we pray, we give of our earnings, as God has prospered us and we fellowship one with another. Always remember, at the Churches of Christ, a warm welcome awaits you.